हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू सेलेनियम विद जाभा जून 2023 बैच ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग सेशन 7 इन टुडे सेशन आई विल कवर फ्यू ऑफ द की इंपोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द सेलेनियम वेब ड्राइवर लाइक हाउ टू हैंडल फ्रेम्स हाउ टू कैप्चर स्क्रीनशॉट हाउ टू हैंडल विंडोज अलर्ट व्हाट इज हेडलेस ब्राउजर टेस्टिंग हाउ टू हैंडल कुकीज व्हाट इज द इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ बाय ऑल एलिमेंट लोकेटर इन सेलेनियम वेब ड्राइवर हाउ टू सिलेक्ट एन ऑप्शन from auto suggest drop down so what is frame or iframe sometimes people get confused right sometimes in case any frame is available right in case you want to operate normal way you will not have to interact you will, it will show that no such element found all this kind of stuff but your element located identification still holds good but still it will throw error why because you did not handle the frame so how could you understand whether I say page is having the frame or not so that part I will cover so before that what is frame so frame is a web page which is embedded in a, another web page or an HTML document embedded inside another HTML document. The frame is often used to insert content from another source such as advertisement into a web page. The frame or iframe tag which specifies that a frame or iframe is available in the web page. So the how user can handle those kind of frame in case it is available primarily in the web page. right? So user cannot detect the frame by just seeing the page. You cannot identify any kind of frame is available. So what you need to do, you need to go to that area where frame is available after opening that uh, URL in any browser. It does not matter whether it's a Chrome, Firefox or any other browsers. So you need to right click and then you will be finding, in case frame is available, you will be finding an option called uh, like reload frame or the frame page source like that. Then you could understand that sometime frame is available. Otherwise, you can go to the April button, uh, press the April button from the keyboard and you can press Ctrl F, then you can search with frame or iframe keyword. So in case any frame is available, you could be able to find the count. So definitely frame or iframe will be tagged. In case it is inside that, it is not a frame, but the tag should start with the frame. So first thing is that you can count how many frame is available, then you can handle the frame. So there are three ways to handle the frame. So that to switch between user frame, user have to use driver switch to dot frame command so there are three way you can either use give the index number in case suppose the three frame is available so index number will be 0 1 2 like that otherwise you can which will be integer format or you can give the frame name or id in case that is available so it will be string format otherwise you can give the web element reference which will be web element format so this is the three way we can handle the frame so let's open any page here so this is the page where I know that some frame is available. But if you click outside here, you could see there is no such frame option is there. But in that particular area, I know this is the frame is available here, right? So if you right click here, you could able to see reload frame or view frame source. That is the way you can identify. But the problem might be that the frame is not over all the page. So definitely you cannot go click here and there everywhere, right? It is not possible. So the best way is press F12 button from the keyboard okay here you can type with iframe in case any iframe is available you could see one of one and it is starting with tag name that is called tag div is a tag right uh, h is a tag p is a tag really iframe should be a tag or frame should be a tag so that means some frame is available and you need to handle the frame first like in case you want, you want to interact with the element okay so here I will show you couple of things so here you can understand how to drag and drop the element so you could see this is the drag and here you can press it drop so that will be drop so that is the simple thing I want to perform it drag and drop the element so the frame is available here so I will not handle the frame first I will try to drag and drop here so I need to inspect the element here you could see drag right this is the ID draggable okay that is the ID for the draggable so I will be creating uh, here I'll be going, I, I have created a class called session 7 and this is the normal uh, kind of step, right, in case you want to open any page. So you need to set the web driver properties. I will be dealing with the Chrome driver class and web driver creating a new object for instance, which is the web driver is the interface and the Chrome driver is the class, maximizing it and passing the URL to open it. So after that, what I will do, okay, so what I will do, I will be just, uh, creating some web element so say source equal to driver 
dot find element here i can use by dot what is the thing available here id right draggable so by dot id and i can give the string id it's not that one here it will be draggable that is the id okay so that is the way i am storing it so here web element pronunciation is not good so it will be lower case otherwise it will not be understood by selenium i need to import the web element right that part from the selenium dot op org open key dot selenium packages now similar way i will be creating a web element for the target variable okay so let's inspect the thing for the target also this is the target right drag and drop is happening so you could see that id is droppable so i am just identifying it now in case you want to drag and drop so you need to take help from the actions class which is the class available in selenium web driver so i'll be trying to create a object or instance for the actions class so i'll be creating an object called act equal to new actions here into type uh, type provide the driver information that is the way syntax of creating the object for actions class now you could see error message is coming so i need to import the actions class from org dot uh, like open key dot selenium dot interaction packages now error message gone then with the help of the actions class i can drag and drop the element so in case you are uh, i mean calling that particular variable then there is a method available called drag and drop you could see here web source and target web element target i need to give it so this is my source i have created this is my target i have created then i need to use build method which is available in the actions class you could see this coming from the action class dot dot perform so that is the way i need to do the actions okay now see let's try to run it but those thing are available inside that frame only right this is the frame part but i did not handle the frame so will it work let's try to see in case any frame is available and the element is inside the frame and you are simply ignoring the frame you are not handling the frame so your code will not work because you did not handle the frame it will throw the error means that it is not able to identify the element because you did not went to the frame inside the frame gone to the frame so that is the way you could find the error right here you could see the error what is there are no such element exception so i already mentioned right in case you are having any oh, no such element exception there could be couple of reasons might be the page not loaded fully might be the page is not fit with the 100% zoom maybe you need to go to the down of the page or other stick apart from that sometime frame or iframe might be available it did not handle so these are the couple of stuff or maybe your internet speed is very very slow these are the couple of stuff might happen your thing is correct your element identification locator is correct but this is the way it happened so what i will do i will try to first like see how many frame is available in that page okay so what i need to do so what is the uh, one second let's close it and let's see how many frame is there so this is the tag for the frame right i frame this is the tag here tag name right you could see this is the tag name so i could see how many tag how many thing is available with the help of the i frame tag so i could use driver dot find elements okay because i need to understand the how many tag by dot tag name so i can give the tag name called i frame okay so it will be giving the list of element now i can get the size dot size so it will be giving me the integer value right return type is integer from the list interface it's coming so i'll be storing in some integer say int frame size that is the variable now i can print it out right So this is the way. I am not commenting out the remaining code. Let's keep it. Let's do it fail, but it will give me the how many frame size is available. Okay, let's run it. So it will still fail the remaining step because the I did not handle the frame. Just I want to get the count of the frame now, so that I can have a clear idea that how many frame is available in the page. I can get it through the code itself or not. So it's got fail, but here you could see the output is coming as one. That means one frame is available. So even you only to manually do it. so with the core itself you can get to know how many frame is available so that part i know i already one frame is available the next thing will that how to handle the frame right so there are three way either you need to give the indexing 
or the frame name or ID or the web element reference. So here three things is not available. Sometimes maybe DB nothing is available. We could see right there is no frame available, right? This is the only class reference available of the frame, so that can be taken as a web element reference, or we can go with the indexing part because this is only one frame available i know so i can pass the indexing called zero but here for this particular frame there is no name or id available but in case sometime it is available you can go with the frame id or the name as well it will be string format right indexing will be integer format your web element reference will be web element format and your name or id in case available you can deal with the frame which will be string format so how to deal with the frame so it is mentioned right driver dot switch to dot frame you need to give the Right, either the indexing or the ID or the name or the web element reference. So we'll handle the frame here with the indexing part first. So driver dot switch to dot frame. You could see as and when you are pressing frame, these are the different methods with different run type is coming, right? I can go with the integer or string or web element reference. Okay, so I will go with that indexing part. So it is zero index. So now I handle the frame now the thing will work okay so now I already gone to the frame and then definitely I could able to identify the element and then dag and dog will be happening so you could see it is running and drag and drop is happening so that is the one way because in this frame only web element difference is available and only indexing is available no ID or name is not available now we can go with that web element difference num also driver dot switch to again dot frame I will be taking that one right so here I will be passing driver dot find element web element nothing but driver dot find element by right by dot name or something class name or here class name is available right here you could see so that particular class name is available demo hyphen frame so that what I can give it so that way also I can handle the frame so whatever thing is available so you need to act accordingly so there is no hard and fast rule that you have to go with only one options in case all the options available you can go with any of the option it will still work so you could see now frame is will be handled also drag and drop is happening simply drag and drop happen with that option also in case name or id is available you can go with the name and id will be string format so that is the way you can ha deal with the frame because frame means that within a page some sort of internal structure they have already developed so that right normal people cannot interact unless you are going to the frame so that is the way sometimes developer right develop the thing right to I mean isolate that particular uh, portion right from the normal way so but we, we can handle it we need to deal it but right so that is the way we need to handle the frame first after that we can interact with the element I'll cover one element then I will take a pause one uh, more thing so how to capture the screenshot so here I will try to cover it with in that particular code itself so capture in screenshot is really important for any kind of testing it does not matter whether you are doing functional testing automation testing API testing or any kind of testing because that screenshot will give you the holistic view or your evidence that you have did something right in case you are logging a defect also you need to provide the screenshot otherwise developer will not acknowledge tomorrow thing right the code is fixed right you will not able to present any kind of fallacy report of the fault report until you are having the key shot, capturing the screenshot so capturing the screenshot for the test execution is one of the important script in any test automation which help user to identify defect and problem by referring the screenshot so selenium web driver provides text screenshot interface to capture a screenshot of the web page when an exception or error occurred during the execution of the code so it does not matter whether pass or fail in case you are passing test case also in Azure or Jira or Rally, you need to provide the screenshot in case you are logging a defect also, you need to provide the screenshot. So from the defect, screenshot itself, people can understand that what is the root cause, how the thing happened from the step by step way, right? So capturing screenshot is always required. Screenshot you can capture in the PNG, JPG or JPG format, right? Any of the format. Some of the possible scenario where user might need to capture screenshot using Selenium web driver is application issues might be there, sometimes assertion failure is there. Sometimes difficult to find the web page, web element, sometimes timeout issue, sometimes exception on the error during the run. So this is the basic generic, but always testing standpoint, any kind of testing, you should always need to capture the screenshot with prop for the proper evidence. Whether test case history or testing is pass or fail does not matter. So how to capture the screenshot? This is a three-step three -step process, right? We need to uh, like first create an object or instance for the text screenshot interface, okay? Then 
user need to call get skin shot as method to create an image file which is provided by the text skin shot interface to capture the skin shot of the web page display in the object uh, driver object so you uh, i'll be covering it and then we need to call the method call right uh, copy method which is available in the file handler class and then we'll be capturing the skin shot so let's try to capture the skin shot at the last step here whatever code we have written here right let's try to capture the skin shot after drag and drop is happening so what is the three step first is that i need to uh, <coughs> create a object or instance for the text skin shot interface this is the interface coming from org to open code selenium so i'll be creating a uh, object called like that equal to at this interface right you cannot create the object or instance directly so you need to type cast the driver here so that is the first thing okay that is the you know it already that is the syntax here you could understand okay okay then you could see the message gone okay then what i need to do i need to go to the second step here file i need to give the source file where i'll be capturing the skin shot right which type of thing file will be there so i need to call the get skin shot as method so here simply i will be scr dot get skin shot as you could see this is coming from text skin shot interface here it will be output type dot file one second get skin shot as okay out put type dot file okay and return type will be here file class so what i will be doing i'll be storing in some file class so simply i'll be using file class say src file source file so i need to import the file class again from the java io okay then i need to give some uh, <coughs> destination file right where well, i'll be capturing the skin shot okay so similar way i'll be creating an object or instance called dst file so which where i want to capture the skin shot so say uh, this is my folder here and in that folder i want to capture the skin shot so i can give the skin shot name called here test dot png that png format so this part is done that that is the folder i need to capture the skin shot okay so what is the ms is coming okay it will be new file sorry it will be file new file otherwise this is the path i am giving simply it will be new file and here i need to keep the path otherwise this is the string only okay so you could see error message gone now what i last step i need to do i need to call the file handler class file handler right this is the file handler class coming from org or open key dot selenium i always remember not for java otherwise it will throw the error dot copy method available here you could see from file to file so from is what is source and to is destination now your cap skin shot will be captured and it will be captured in that particular selenium training folder and name will be test.png now let's try to run it and here as and when you are using file and alert copy you need to surround the try catch block or you need to give some throws declaration so i can just give that exception declaration so in case you are dealing with file primarily you need to give surround with try catch block or throw declaration that is the java properties otherwise it will throw the error so here same way it will work drag and drop will happen but after drag and drop is happening right it will be kind of giving you the screenshot so drag and drop happen your code executed fine now you can go to the path right where screenshot is captured you could see test.png file got generated 728 pm right recently now if you open it you could see the screenshot will show you drag and drop then next question will come right in case i want to create the 100 screenshot and in case i am giving the same name so what will happen your old screenshot will be replaced by new right and you will not having uh, able to capture all your kind of relevant skin shot so that is the problem and every time i will not be writing this so many line of code again and again and again 
that is the reason I need to go with some sort of reusable component creation okay so what I need to do I'll be creating some reusable component here okay so for the method I'll be creating you so before that what are uh, what are the way I can create a reusable component so I'll be creating a method called public static so that I no need to create an object instance and that can be accessible in the class itself public static void and I can keep suppose say method name called text screenshot screenshot and here I will be passing right reference web driver reference I need to pass it that is the syntax for the method web driver driver and another one is the path which path I want to store it right so string path or uh, screenshot scr path screenshot path okay so that is the simple ma method I need to write it now so here I am also giving driver and here also is driver right so what I need to do I need to create a global driver okay object so here I will be doing public static variable web driver driver so that that driver will refer everywhere that is the way you can create global web driver and definitely you need to define something called static otherwise it will be creating problem until static right you cannot access everywhere static means it is global variable now this driver is matched with here and again this driver also match with here so there will be no problem otherwise every time it will be creating the problem that is the one of the thing now what I will do the same type of line of code right I will I will try to implement I will uh, here I am just adding in block in the comment and here I have the same thing I want to implement it here but definitely I'll be having some sort of changes so that it will not be hard coded okay so this is the first thing similar way there will be no change at all okay then next one is second one also there will be no change okay the same comment I'll be using third one right here I am using the variable so here instead of that hard coded path I'll be giving the variable name simply okay and then again the last one also will not be changed so that is the way I'll be capturing the screenshot and again similar way I need to surround with some throws declares in the method itself okay exception now you, it's got my method reusable method I have created it successfully now I'll be calling that method right suppose say n I want to capture the screenshot after the page is open one time and after the drag and drop is happen one time in case you are having 10 actions you can capture the screenshot for 10 time but my method is common I will be simply calling that method and I will not giving any hard coded right name otherwise it will be replaced right every time you have to give the name so we will be giving it some sort of add some time stamp you already in the last uh, couple of seasons I already covered right what is the time stamp is required so there is a date calendar all these functions available right we can capture the time stamps also okay that is the way I can do it so this is my class as the method is static so simply by calling the class I can create the screenshot I can call the screenshot method I no need to create an object or instance because the like but that particular text screenshot class is static in nature right you could see now text screenshot thing is coming here you need to pass the driver reference and the path which path you want to capture the screenshot so here it will be driver and there I will be giving the path so what I'll be doing it in that path right whatever path I want to call right I will be not be hard coding completely so what I will do this is my uh, file right selenium training that where I want to capture the screenshot so this is the first thing I will be doing it within the double quote I am giving it and then slash slash this is the folder I want to capture then I want to concord in it again right plus so what I concord in I will be add a appending the millisecond format so it will be unique always so system dot current dot current millisecond there is a method available current times millis so that will be added in that particular path then I can give the again extension which extension I want to give it right again plus sign and extension I need to give dot png dot jpg any format I can give it that is the simple way I can simply capture the screenshot by calling that method okay now what I'll do I'll simply copy that part and again I'll paste it here 
after drag and drop is happening so you could see how easily we can do it so that is the way right better to create the usable component where anything you will be utilizing it more than one two or three times so you'll be writing it once and you'll be taking the advantage so next tomorrow right you need to change something so you'll be only updating in the usable component automatically all your right everywhere wherever that particular method is getting called everywhere it will be impacted now let's try to run it so here i am trying to call the screenshot method two times one is after opening the page one is after drag and drop is happening i can call it n number of times so every time it will create the screenshot in the same training folder selenium training folder and your thing will be added by the current millisecond and definitely second might be not unique minute might not be unique right but your millisecond will be always unique so you no need to worry about at all you can give again another formatting based on a requirement but that is the one of the formatting i could say you can modify your thing based on your like convenient right uh, requirement so drag and drop happen your code is perfectly working fine now close it now go to that folder right here it should create two screenshot with the uh, millisecond format in the selenium training folder now if you go here you could see this is the two screenshot got generated 734 734 millisecond will be always different you could see one six nine zero zero uh three four six nine is common right like the last part two nine three 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 five three five is not common so that is the way you can get the screenshot which will be unique in nature you could see the first one is after opening the page and second one is after drag and drop happening and you could see the name of the screenshot that is the way right as and when required you can capture n number of screenshot for you all your validation point okay so the screenshot is always required for any kind of testing whether it's a manual or api automation mobile automation any kind of stuff okay so screenshot will be always required to prove uh, give the evidence that you have did some testing and your thing was working or not working at that time otherwise it will be fired back to the test testing team whether it's a functional testing or it's a automation testing okay so that is the simple way right we can drag and drop element we can this is the three things you have learned as of now how to drag and drop how to hand deal with the frame and how to capture the screenshot okay so uh, any questions guys i will take a pause anyone yeah so you need to do some lot of practice the things might look easy <laughs> but yeah practice is required hmm. ha ha Haha. No, here it is the interface. Accents is the interface. So that is the reason we cannot directly create the same way, right? Class, uh, then your object reference and equal to new class. That is the way. But interface, it will not be like that. So either you need to typecast the driver or the, there are different way based on the interface type. Okay. So class object creation is very, very simple. But interface, you cannot create the object directly, right? Because the web developer is all the interface. So you could see, I am taking the help from the Chrome developer class then I am creating here. Here in case action class, right? I am also type catching the driver here. In case it is a uh, like text screenshot class, again I am type catching the driver also here. Okay. So that is the way I am creating the object for the interface primarily. No, no, not instance. Object is instance. Object or instance of the class or the interface. Yes. Instance is equivalent to object. Object or instance you can call. Yeah, right, right, right. Terminology. Yeah, yeah. So it is text screenshot is the uh, interface and SCR is the object or the instance of the text screenshot interface. So that is the name I have given. You can change any name. But that interface name you cannot change. That is coming from the Selenium web driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is the thing I already mentioned here how to this is the three step process, right? The first will be creating the object or instance, second one right we'll be calling the get screenshot as method to create an image file which is provided by the text screenshot interface to capture the screenshot of the web page displayed in the driver object the third second step and definitely i need to have 
one uh, file class object reference where I'll be storing the screenshot. Then will be last step. You'll be creating. Uh, uh, you'll be calling the file handler class and the copy method inside the file handler class and source file to destination file. This is a three-step process for capturing the screenshot in Selenium WebDriver. Yeah, yeah. So this is the different thing. This is the right. Sometimes right drag and drop also need to do right in the real time also. Suppose say uh, right uh, some of the element was there right. So you need to move it right. Sometimes drag and drop move all this time need to happen. But this is the will be handled by the actions class right. Sometimes context click, double click, all this stuff might also need to require. So this will be coming from the actions class. So after the actions class object created. So if you try here the actions class object, you could see lot of actions coming right. Click click and hold context click double click drag and drop everything all the method will be coming from the actions class key up key down right move all this stuff yeah even sometime in the actions class send key method is available so suppose say driver dot after identification element elem you die sometimes send key is not working so you have to take the help so that is the one in interviewer questions might ask that how to enter the right value in the uh, text box so you can say that there is a directly we can right create the object or the element directly after that I can use send key apart from that I can create another option is that I can create an object or instance from the actions class then there will be method call available in the actions class send key also that part I also in can try sometime in case that is not first one is not working that is another option to enter the send key right enter the value in the text field. Yeah, I mean, I take uh, that is I mean, I stole right. Mostly uh, drag and drop. I mean, it will be working fine. But primarily, sometime I already mentioned this. My primarily four kind of problem might happen that your page is not loaded fully, not because of your internet speed. Your internet speed is up to the mark, but because of the so many as and when page will be having more kind of images, right? More uh, big size that will take more time to load. Okay. So that is the reason we'll be giving some sort of implicit weight that will be covered here only. So I can give some implicit weight called 30 seconds. So that it will wait for 30 seconds and it will give some time to load the page. Right? Then it will throw the error in case it's still not loaded. Sometimes your internet connectivity is very, very slow. So 30 seconds elapsed, but it because of internet connectivity, still is not able to load it. Right? Sometime your network connection disrupted, right? Your internet connection may be like paused for a one minute time, it will not happen. Sometime element locator thing got changed, right? Maybe today you have created, but tomorrow got changed. So that is the reason, right? Always better to use CSS or XPath, right? That will be very, very unique thing. And third time, like mentioned, like sometime frame or iframe might be available, right? That is uh, not, you will handle it. So these are the kind of generic stuff you will be facing. So this is the kind of solution I could say, in case you are saying this kind, any kind of no such element exception. You can give the trick and all this trick. To yeah, right, right. Implicit weight. Yeah, implicit weight. That part I'll cover here. Yeah. Okay. Is it fine now? Any other question, guys? Okay, we'll go to the next topic then. Then how to handle alert? Okay, or the pop up using Selenium Web Driver. So alert is a small message box which displays on screen notification to give the user some kind of information or ask for a permission to perform certain kind of operation. It may be also used for warning purposes. Alert in web pages is Java properties but not the HTML properties. That is the reason you cannot inspect that alert, right? Or you cannot identify through any kind of element locator technique. So you have to handle the alert in three way. So there is four way. There is a uh, alert interface available in the Selenium web driver where there are four methods available: dismiss, accept, get text, and keys. So through dismiss you can dismiss the alert. Accept means you can like accept the alert. S get text also you can get the text of the alert, or you can sometime you can add some keys values in the alert. So sometime alert can be like only OK button is uh, available. So it is giving some information. So you can accept the alert. Sometime alert can be OK cancel or yes or no. Okay. So you need to either accept alert or dismiss the alert. 
sometime you need to get the alert message right that what is alert all about sometime there can be like the alert right you need to enter some value after that you need to give the click on the ok button then only your in case thing is working then alert will be handled so these are the kind of right thing you might need to encounter might be encountering in your real time automation also so i'll be just explaining the solution how to handle the alert so let's driver dot get so this is the generic uh, kind of uh, alert okay this is the url for the alert where you can get all kind of alert okay so this is the page if you inspect here and suppose say if i if you click here right then you could find this kind of alert right okay so this is the text you can print it out you can enter some value you can click on ok button so the alert will be accepted if you click cancel it will be dismissed you could see it is dismissed and if you again open if you enter something such a test and if you click ok so alert will be accepted and you could able to see the value here so that is the way thing i want to automate it so let's in the identify the element so let's press f12 button here <coughs> so you could see right there is no text there is no uh, id class all this stuff so how we need to create an xpath by otherwise there is no way so how can i create the xpath this is the tag available so i'll be this is the text also available this is the tag available press ctrl f so tag go with the tag name slash slash tag name is button b u t t o n and give third bracket at the rate text equal to okay not sorry not that one click for js prompt So slash slash button. So here not at the rate because it is text only. So no need to give the at the rate. You could see now the XPath created one of one, right? Because there is no ID, there is no class, nothing is available. So how can you create identify the X element first? So you need to element identify the element first. Then only you can right click that element. So here I have by identified the element with the help of the XPath. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll be storing it some web element. See what is the element like uh, JS prompt button JS prompt that is the element name equal to driver dot find element by dot xpath so that is the way simply I am identifying the element first. <coughs> then I cannot handle the thing. So I, what I need to do, I need to right first create an object called instance. Okay, there is an alert interface already available. Okay, so what I'll be doing it. So uh, uh, driver dot switch to dot alert. Okay, that is the way I can do it. Alert is the interface that method will be coming. So driver dot switch to okay dot alert you could see this is coming from the alert interface right it is coming from the alert interface dot dismiss so before that you need to click on that one right so that your message will come dot click <coughs> so first i am dismissing the alert so let's run it So it will open the page it will click here it will dismiss the alert you could see dismiss happen that is the reason it is waiting null okay next what i will be doing it dismiss part is done next i want to print the right whatever message is coming and the alert so i will be driver dot switch to dot alert dot get text okay it is coming from the alert interface 
return type is string so i can store in some string that is my variable and i can print it out so that that alert message will be printed out okay so printed now i'll be adding some value here right now i'll be adding some value here so i will need to use the send keys method so again driver dot switch to dot alert dot send keys so say i will be uh, pay test one two three like that it's so okay then i'll be accepting it so again dot accept so after thing it will be accept so that is the way i will be uh, using the four important method which is available in the alert interface dismiss accept get text and send keys now let's try to run it okay let's try to run it so what will happen it will first get the text in the app after clicking the thing alert will be coming and then you can simply get the text whatever available in the alert interface then you can right enter the value in that text field and you can accept the alert so it will be displaying that test one two three entered okay you could see it happened too fast but you could see here test one two three entered right and if you go to the console you could able to see right that alert alert message I am a JS prompt. That was the thing, right here. Okay, I am a JS prompt. So that was the error text, and it got printed also. So that is the way. In case any kind of alert is coming, so you could see any. In case alert is coming, you press F12 button. You cannot detect the thing. Okay, right? You could see there is nothing coming. Right? That will not work. It will be disabled. In case alert is coming, that will be disabled. You cannot do anything. Right? So that is the problem. So that is the reason you always take the help from the alert interface. There are four important methods available: dismiss, accept the alert, dismissing the alert, send some value in the alert in case this is the stuff is coming, <coughs> <coughs> or you can get the text of the alert. So this is the way you can handle the alert or any kind of pop-up using Selenium WebDriver. The next one is <coughs> headless browser testing. So what is headless browser testing? So sometime right uh, say you are working in some of the um, machines pipeline in the Linux, Linux machine where there is no browser setup or maybe suppose in your laptop there is no, no browser setup or in case it is opening the browser it might take extra time extra resources right I mean your productivity might be impacted in case you are doing so many parallel things. So that is the reason sometimes user don't want to open the UI but want to like execute the test case. So it will be doing the same way but it will not opening any GUI. So performing test execution of the web application without opening a browser is called headless browser testing. The headless browser acts similar to a normal web browser. User have full control over the web pages loaded into the headless browser. The only difference is user will not be able to see a graphical user interface. User have no options other than using headless testing when user machine does not have a GUI. For instance, if user want to run test in Unix, that will not be having any GUI. So without GUI, without browser, we can still do the testing using automation Selenium web driver. So it is recommended to use the headless browser when tests are executed in parallel as user interface based browser consumes a lot of memory or resources. So headless browser can be used for server side performance testing too. Anyone can run test case using headless browser, then user will get the result in right compared to compared uh, like uh, less time because it is not opening the thing. So it will take less time compared to the after opening the browser all this stuff. So when tester have to run the test case on the remote machine or server which does not have any browser but still user want to execute the test cases then they can try with headless browser. So there are couple of headless browser available even also Chrome you can also make it headless. I will show you how to do it. Apart from that HTML you need Ghost, Phantom, JS all this thing is also available for headless browser testing. But HTML you need is the lightest weight driver you can use for headless browser testing. So HTML unit driver is the lightest weight and the faster implementation headless browser for the web driver. It is based on HTML unit. It is known as headless browser driver as well. It is same as like uh, Chrome, Firefox, but it does not have any GUI. Some of the key features support HTTP, HTTPS protocol both. 
it support different HTML responses, it support cookies, proxy server support, JavaScript support. It also has the ability whether failing responses from the server would show exception or should be returned as page of the appropriate of the appropriate type. Right? So what is the first step you need to do? Right? You need to install that jar file for the HTML unit driver. So what you can do, you can go to the Google simply and you can type here HTML unit driver right selenium download simply and it will give you the path okay simply you can download the latest driver for the thing now I think four point thing is available so here right uh, you can go with that jar file okay so what is the jar file uh, okay never put one jar with that is the jar file you can simply download right click here and it will be downloaded it will be zip format you need to unzip it so I already downloaded one previous version and still it is working so that is the way it will look like selenium not selenium that that one once yeah it is google type it simply type it html enter in the google there is no path the first path it will be giving github path okay this is the path github the first up, yeah, GitHub, it is coming from the GitHub. Selenium is called HTML unit driver. So, it, you know, after download, it will look like I already having, yeah, right, you could see 4.7 point version available. So, that is the way it will, with dependencies, right, I already mentioned. So, HTML, yeah, that's fine, yeah, the, no, 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 it is not, it, any version you can go with, like, which is like beyond 4. So, latest version is 4.1, but I have using 4.7, that's fine, not be a problem. So, you know, download, yeah. Second thing is after download is done, you need to go to the project, right click, properties, right, you need to click on the external jars and you need to just associate it, right, open and apply and close. And I already associated it, you could see, right, HTML unit driver, so that all the relevant classes, interface, which is coming from the Selenium HTML driver also, it will be coming to your test cases. Let's, let's comment out all this part now. So, I want to launch the thing with the HTML driver, so it will not open anything, but it will still work the same way. Okay, so let's, um, what is the syntax here? I am given web driver driver equal to new web HTML web unit driver, right? So, let's comment out first. It, uh, I already created the driver properties, so uh, static driver, so driver equal to new here it will be HTML unit, right? So, what is that new HTML unit driver? So, error message is coming, so you need to import it, okay? From the HTML unit, you could see this is the way. Now, same way, I'll be calling it, like, uh, same way, driver.get, any way, then, I can also print it out, say, driver dot, you don't need to maximize it, because anyway, you will not able to see the navigation, driver.get, current URL, right, or get title also. So, it will not open anything, get title, <coughs> but it will give you the result in the console. So, let us try to run it. You could see, it did not open anything, but you are able to see what is the current URL and what is the, right, uh, the uh, title of the page. Okay, the title of the page you could see, this is the, the internet that is the title right and this is the page url that is also printed out okay so that is the way without opening the browser you can do the headless browser testing now let's we'll go how to make firefox also right firefox browser also headless so here what i need to do for the firefox browser to make it headless so we need little bit change not major change little bit change okay so, the first one is, I need to set the properties here, so whatever already there, so, let's copy, 
detour. So that is my first steps. Then first I will be using a chrome options. Okay, that part you need to use it. Chrome Chrome options. Here you can create a ob object here called options equal to new Chrome options. That is the first thing you need to do additionally to make Chrome as headless. Then similar way driver as web driver is already declared here global variable right web driver driver so I am calling the driver thing equal to new chrome driver and here you need to pass the variable called options whatever you have created now you could see error message gone and next part is that ok so before that one after the thing is created so you need to uh, make it headless option dot set headless right set headless dot there is a methods available in the chrome option called set headless ok so that your chrome browser will be headless and you need to make it true now similar way whatever you can do it right you can uh, pass the url right but your chrome browser will not open ok so it will work as a headless mode you can just um, get the again desired thing ok so we are making chrome as a headless with the help of the chrome option and headless equal to otherwise the same code is there now I did not use maximize because anyway it will not having any impact because it is not opening the browser at all it is right you could see there is no chrome browser open opening but it will give you the result you could see the result got came same way but it is not opening the browser that is the beauty of the headless browser you are exceptionally fast and in case your browser is not set up you can still do it ok there are a lot of browsers you supported already mentioned here like chrome primarily for the headless browser you should use better use the html unit otherwise lot of browser you can also make it but yeah i just work with two browsers um, but this is the supported browser also you can make them headless driver ok <laughs> No, 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 all the thing will be happening. Whatever testing will be doing it, in case you are having 1000 line of code, it will work same way, but it will not open the browser. It will do the same way. Okay. And your execution will be faster also. Because it is not opening the UI, so it will be faster, na? It will taking less memory. Now, Yeah, requirement sometime, right? Suppose say I want to make it faster also, right? That is the primary reason, okay? So your uh, UI is not, not, not UI is not ready, but your dry, your, your particular system is not having UI, I mean, not browser installed. The, what is the main objective of the headless browser testing I mentioned here, right? in case your in case you want to yeah in case no is it fine audible now yeah so i am saying that in case suppose say you want to execute some of your skip in the remote driver remote brow remote uh, windows or remote v like virtual machine right maybe where maybe your drive browser is not set up those are the area or maybe sometimes some system is primarily for the unix based system where your browser is not set up you can go with the headless browser mod or sometime you want to make your execution faster so that your le less memory will be used it so that also you can go with that way so that your execution will be more faster than the normal way in case you are opening the ui because it is using some resources now it will be reducing your the speed of your execution so that is the way Okay, but it will depend, right? Whether your organization, your, your customer is one to willing or not, but that is the options also available to do the execution in the headless mode in the using Selenium web driver. So these are the all kind of solutions. I am not saying that everybody have to use it, but in case you are 
like encountering this kind of situation where your browser is not working right or you are not having any browser installed at all right you can still go with the headless browser mode execution so your same way it will work but it will just not opening any ui is it clear or any doubt okay yeah. so the next topics is like uh, how to handle the cookies with selenium web driver so what is cookies so it is very generic term right so in case you are surfing something in the internet right your laptop uh, like tab or your mobile or even people surfing to your like youtube right or any other thing right so that you could see that something whatever you recently served right you it will be displayed so it will storing some sort of uh, information latest information whatever you have served so that right uh, what cookie is used so that right you can no need to type it again right you can just go and just click that and you can use that latest search after that you can search it so cookies are files stored in local computer containing information submitted by the website visited by user the information is stored in a key value pair and allows a particular website to customize its contents as per the user every time the user loads the website the browser send the cookie back to the server to notify the website of the user previous activity so cookies will be having some lifespan and cookies are browser specific so in case you are surfing using some sort of chrome browser but that will not able to retrieve in the firefox browser because these are the two different browser though your laptop or desktop is same but it is browser specific and based on your setting cookies can maybe hold maybe 100 cookies you can store right 50 cookies you can put based on the setting so in case it is more than 100 right your setting is 100 in case it is more more than 100 so it will only store the latest 100 and old will be automatically removed from your browser so cookies are case sensitive right so like the in case you are storing in different name uppercase lowercase it will be different cookies only cookies are domain specific right i mean like uh, domain cannot read or write to a, to a cookie created by another domain so these are the way also the questions will come why cookie is required right what the cookies required the thing is that first thing is that you can write uh, definitely store that what are the different uh, right sites what are the different pages you have navigated sometime right from the execution report i want to understand the test coverage try to understand guys okay suppose say from the skip itself run history itself i want to understand suppose say in case you are having total 100 pages right but i want to understand right whether all my pages is like already covered or not so you can just write uh, like go, um, get the latest report of the cookies so you could understand that how many pages it already navigated and from the way right you can easily do the coverage analysis that these are the pages my script is not working or did not implement it so you can then go through this particular pages and you can identify what other thing is missing that is the one primary aspect like cookies used in the real time automation also for the code coverage analysis in terms of what are the functionality what are the important pages already covered okay so let's see so cookies is a the uh, there are a lot of methods available add cookies get cookies get cookie name delete all cookies delete cookie name is available in the cookies class so add cookies this method is used to create and add the cookie in the cookie file the get cookies it will retrieve it will uh, through which you will be able to retrieve all the cookies stored in that particular browser get cookie name means it will only able to get the cookie name based on the specific name delete all cookie means you can remove all the cookies so that definitely it will help you right to clear the storage right clear the uh, like faster your speed and delete cookie name sometime that you one cookie you want to remove it these are the different thing already available i am not saying that everything you need to use it but that is the way right with the help of the get cookies name what are the cookies already covered you can get to know and through which you can get the coverage like what are the thing already covered what are the page already covered what are the function already covered so let's comment it out your previous code So this two part is not required at all. Now I'll be going in the generic way, and I can remove it. Okay. So this is the suppose this is the right part. I want to open it. 
then next one I want to add the cookies maybe I can go with the uh, any page also Google page also let's try to replace it with Google that does not matter means that after opening that page you will be able to see the cookies so this is the pages I want to store the cookies that is the reason you need to give the first the which page you want to store the cookies so that once the page is open then only you can just get the cookies so what I'll be doing it first thing is that after opening my new page right I'll be maximizing the driver right so I think that already available I will not so I think that is it then I will remove all the cookie after driver is maximizing I will remove all the cookie so that my browser will be lightweight right it will remove all the things so it will be free so what I what is the thing I need to use right uh, driver dot manage manage dot delete dot delete all cookies so that automatically all the cookies will be deleted first then it will open the Google page then I can add the cookies so I need to call the cookie class right so what I need to do I need to create the object first cookie class say say cookie one equal to new cookie and it will be key value pair combination okay so first you need to give the name base name so say Google and then you need to give key and value pair combination you need to give the URL without HTTPS the base URL so that way I can store some cookies now your error message is coming so you need to import the cookie class from the selenium dot watch not from the other uh, package please be remembered it will be always org dot open qa dot sell name otherwise it will work not work then you need to add this is the cookie object created and now i need to add the cookie in the browser so what i need to do i need to again driver dot manage dot add cookie and i need to provide the cookie reference so that is the way i need to add the cookie so my cookie will be stored here so that is the way right similar way as and when I'll be opening it I able to able to see that what are the cookies already stored by the pages next so let's try to uh, next in case you want to get the specific cookie details right you can also get it so what you need to do uh, say I want to uh, get the cookie value name other stuff right so you can simply print it out for specific one by one cookie in case you want to deal with that one so you need to use that cookies uh, that is the method okay that part you can try for get all the cookies but here I am listing to get only specific to cookie so again here it will be driver dot manage dot get cookie named okay that is the method here you need to give which you want to get it so first thing is that you need to give the cookie name whatever is stored right so that part I will be giving it within the bracket then only pressing dot here the cookie name I've given you could see now you could able to see what other thing you want to get it like get domain get name get value these are the part you can do it automatically like lot of additional information also it will give it one second so so first one is get domain what is domain dot get value get name all this part you can go one by one or you can remove all the cookie or remove the cookie by name also dot get value this is the primary thing we used to deal with whenever we are dealing with cookie one second one second let's try to run it and let's see how it is behaving with the okay. 
so now page open now go to the thing you could see this is coming the domain this is the domain of the cookie this is the name of the cookie this is the value of the cookie so that is the way one by one you can add n number of cookie also right so that automatically your from that here also you can able to understand that how many cookies how many pages right i don't want to go through the inspect the code right it is not possible me to go through the hundreds of code hundred lines of code hundred skip but in case you are adding right that this is the pages it is covering right that these are the pages is covering so all the cookies will be added one by one here and then what i need to do simply i can call it right get all cookies and i can get all the cookies so from that list itself i can understand that what are the transaction covered what are the page has been covered so that way i can do the code coverage analysis right whatever coverage already done for my automation using my automation test case that is the main important reason apart from that in case i want to remove something right so that it will not uh, kind of um uh take any space or it will not reduce the performance also so i need to remove thing because every time you will you will inspect sometime automatically by default some cookies will be stored but every time i want to clear it after opening it right so the automatically thing will be faster your browser will be your browser performance will be faster also so that is the way cookie also it play a pivotal role primarily in the coverage standpoint right what are the transactions you already covered in case you are already having 20 pages from the theme itself you can easily understand that how many pages have been covered right the automation architect easily understand and they can give you feedback right these are the pages is not covered these are transactions is not covered so that you can right analysis and you can add your test script accordingly So, any questions before going to the next last two topics? So, yeah, videos will be there, code will be there. Just practice little bit, guys. So, uh, because these are not very easy, but but yeah, at least you need to, to do right one time. Go through the PDF, then the uh, videos, and then you need to practice at least twice. Then only you could able to get the holistic picture. so practice is really required that but i cannot help otherwise the thing you might right now you are able to understand the concept but the only once you do the practice they need to be very very clear yes not much primarily suppose say in the big project right that your uh, your manager right maybe your, your your customer right who does not have any automation knowledge simply they are asking that can you just explain me in 10 minutes that what are the pages already covered by your script then how can you let them know or you are like uh, your leadership right they want to get the complete report that is the way right you can use it okay so this is the way you can say that this is the transaction has been covered these are the pages already covered out of 20 pages 30 pages like that okay so that will give you the holistic picture and apart from that you can use drill cookie sometime other th also right they sometimes your Uh, you need to store the cookie and also you need to find out that right that cookie is also accessible or not just kind of favorite right it is also a favorite kind of stuff you are adding in the browser so that is the way like your cookie will, your favorite will be added and you no need to give the url you can simply right you can in case you are adding it to the favorite okay or bookmark right it will be added next time you just open the browser it will be added there right displayed here automatically as your your uh, i mean bookmark options So how can you do it? You can go here. You can go to the history, and you can get it. So automatically, you no need to remember the thing. You can automatically get it. So this is the one more another aspect. Any other questions? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so those kind of stuff you need to handle the exceptions right that in case something is coming right then it will handle like try catch block simply in case something is coming alert coming they have handle it otherwise simply ignore it right so try and catch block no 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 it will fail right then only immediately i already said automation is not i mean it is not like that 
you are doing automation but you'll be having the functional knowledge if you run it it will fail then you need to debug the thing right then only you can go get to know that maybe five time within after i have run it for five time but what time that alert might came then i will be uh, like leveraging this part in my code right part of try catch block so that 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 part i can know that maybe out of 100 instance five instance it might come so i'll be handling it it is not like that you will be writing your code one time you need to maintain it regularly and lot of new challenges might come you need to handle them then only your script will be fruitful otherwise if right today you are writing it even after five days it will not work so regular maintenance activity will be there definitely for any kind of tools yeah hmm <coughs> yeah ha ha not work right so that is the way you need to inspect it and you need to find out whether sir, this is a genuine problem or this is a kind of problem might come 10 times out of 100 definitely you need to go for the uh, i mean uh, try catch block this is called known exception na? right in case you know that this might be your known exception or all this stuff you can go with that there are three kind of exception i covered in java one is known exception one is unknown exception one is error error you cannot handle at any point of time error means like your system got crashed right or your maybe memory utilization completely high you cannot handle through automation the checked or unchecked exception you can handle it yeah checked means during compile time you can get some error unchecked means only during running you can get the error those part you can handle it in pre as a precaution so that in case something is coming you can still handle it in case not coming de definitely fine because try and catch block in case only it is coming it will handle otherwise it will simply ignore Yeah, that is the way, right? Let's try it. In case there is not a way, I will give you other solution. There are a lot of things available now. I mean, I mentioned, right? Right? You, whenever working, it might be having some specific challenge. So, I mean, I already mentioned, I have tried trying to cover the basic way, right? That most of the things will be covered here. But you will be having some specific situation. So, let's uh, share me. I will try to find out, right? In case these are the things. Let's try to implement first whatever you are learning. In case it is still not solving your problem, let's may I might be different story and you need to find out the solution. Okay. Yeah, did you try to the alert interface? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, share me. Okay, I will share you the solution next week. Okay. Just share the screenshot or create a video and share with me. So that is the way I can get to know. But in case it's publicly accessible only, <laughs> in case your URL is not, uh, no, then I need to think, right? Because that is the problem. Okay, based on your error, I can also get some understanding. Okay, I will try to solve here. Yeah, I'll give some solution or give some URL. You can just try to implement it. Any other question, guys? Okay. The last two topic from today's session, right? Uh, what is the importance of buy all locator in Selenium web driver? So as of now, you already seen, right? There are primary eight element locator technique like uh, name, class name, expert, CSS ID, right? Link text, parcel links, all this stuff. But sometime in case suppose you have already given ID, but tomorrow ID got changed, your script will fail. So sometime you know that maybe there's a probability that, right? My one proper element locator thing might get changed. So you can go with the multiple element locator at the same time okay so for this there is a buy all right the mm, thing is all available in selenium buy all clause so buy all is an extra special locator in selenium web driver which helps user to find the element based on the given locator locator can be any other thing like uh, any other type like name class name expert is all this stuff mentioned so buy all locator tries to find the element using the first locator if the element is not present then it will wait for the given implicit wait time once it reaches the maximum wait time and there is no element then the buy uh, old uh, method tries to find the element using the second locator third fourth like that is the way in case still nothing is working then it will throw the error so that is the beauty of the thing so here i will cover one more thing called implicit timeout so say this is my google page or any i can take any other page also uh, it's fine 
let's take with Google page only let's uh, go with that so what I'll be doing here before after cooking right I'll be using something called implicit weight okay so what I can do driver or after opening the page also you can give the implicit way better to give it driver dot manage dot window I think no manage dot timeout I think dot timeout yeah one second dot timeouts yeah dot implicit way Here you need to give the argument and the time unit. So, say I want to wait for uh, 20 seconds, right? Or maybe 10, uh, 10 seconds. And here you can give the time unit. Time unit dot second minute or anything you can give it. Second, so that is the way I have given 10 seconds. So, what will happen? It will give me 10 second time. It will wait for 10 second time before throwing any error for every instances. So that is the way you can use implicit wait. So say you, you know that your page might take 60 seconds, so you can give it 60 seconds so that it will not throw any error. So it will fast wait, but the importance of, uh, the beauty of the implicit time though that, suppose you have given 30 seconds wait time, but your page is loaded fully by 10 seconds. So it will not wait for the remaining 20 seconds. So you can work, your operation will be work, next operation will be work in the 11 seconds. So it is the maximum time. But as and when your thing is working, it will not wait for the maximum time. Right, you can go to the next step immediately. That is the beauty of the implicit way. Say the next one is that I want to uh, enter something in the Google page, right? So let's press F12 button here. Okay, so you could see uh, there is a name available, right? or id available say right for this particular field class available right so that is the way you can work but in case suppose say tomorrow class is got changed so you can go with multiple way so what i'll be doing it in case you are using diver.find element you can only give one element locator but here i'll be using by all locator so what i need to do i need to use driver dot find element instead of by I will be using by all so here it will be new by all new by all you need to keep the back so new by all then by one by one by dot say name the first thing I can inspect with the name, what is the name is Q. Okay. Then my first part is done. Then I can give comma. Right. Then comma again by dot class. I can give what is the class here the class is this so that is the way in case it's uniquely available then again I can give comma by dot other thing is available called ID let's see whether ID is unique here yeah unique also ID is also unique dot id so that is the way i can give multiple in case uh, nothing is working something is not working then dot send keys diver dot find element okay uh, that's fine let's store in some web element web element search text Yeah, it is by dot class name, right? I think so. Class name. Yes, that is the reason is throwing the error. Then, it is error is coming, so I need to import that by all element locator from the wg dot over and case of page factory model 
then this is the search text box I can add some value say uh, selenium ok so now let's try to run it so I have given implicit time as 10 seconds so what will happen so three elemental locator is there in case something is working it will work right? you could see because Q is there right that is working but tomorrow say Q got changed to Q1 so what will happen this particular name part will not work so it will go for the class name or ID right but before that it will wait for 10 seconds after that it will go for the next one right that is the way your implicit timeout and your new bio will be right interrelated so it could see it is not throwing an error it will wait for 10 seconds in case second one is working right it will try to enter the value after waiting 10 seconds only even second one is not working you second your second one work so it given the enter the value after 10 seconds okay so it's working second one also change it right like two three so it will go for the third one so up the here for it will wait for 10 seconds it will wait for 10 seconds and it will go for the third element locator in case it's working fine it will be working fine otherwise it will throw the error so that is the way let's let's try to run it again So that is the beauty. In case you know that some of the element might get thin, you can give multiple elements so that at least out of two or three, one might be work. That is the way you can write, uh, um, give less maintenance effort. So 10 plus 10 seconds to wait for the two field and then it will go for the third element locator. In case third is also not working, so after 30 seconds it will throw the error that element not found. Okay. After 20 seconds, it got found, third one, so it is working. Now, let's change the third one also. Right, I am changing it to one. So, it will not work. So, every time 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, it will work. In case you are giving 5 seconds, so 5 seconds plus 5 seconds plus 5 seconds, it will work. 15 seconds, it will work and it will throw the error. Then only. So, every 5 seconds, there will be blink. Means, it is trying to identify the element. Okay, it will be blink. You could see there is a blink will be means every 5 seconds is trying to identify based on the three different element locator value after 15 seconds it will throw the error plus bling might be happen and then only it will throw the error you could see no such element exception ok so that is the way there will be importance of the that particular stuff by name so I can change it so it will work now because first thing is working fine, so immediately it will work. Yeah, buy all element locator. Yeah, buy all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. So you can give multiple element reference at the same time for the same element. Only you in case you are using buy all. Okay. Otherwise, you can only use either by name or class name or CSS by express only one thing so in case that got in your script will be failing because you have will not be having option multiple option so that is the way by all will sometimes play an important role so in case you know that sometimes it thing will got changed multiple times you can go with that option no 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 <laughs> it is the variable I have created for the field <laughs> no why you can directly uh, enter here na? you can directly enter also send keys not be a problem so I have created the element for your reference you can also directly enter the element send keys here directly after anything because this is the element variable I am storing it so that I can access have n number of person for the same variable in case you want to only do one action, then you can directly, uh, I mean, call that method only, that particular thing only. Okay. So, in uh, relation to that, right, say, <coughs> there will be some sort of, uh, uh, auto size drop down will be there, primarily just Google search, right, in case you are entering something called, say, uh, let's enter something called, okay. 
say just I want to enter uh, this only. Okay, Harazan and then space. You could see lot of options will be coming. But say tomorrow the first thing is coming. Maybe I have selected one. But tomorrow I am selecting that one, right? That Harazan Bandabada H. So next time again, right? You go back, right? And if you press here Harazan A, so that option will be going fast because of the mm, engine search engine thing, right? Okay. That is the sometime that it will be fine if you refresh the page. So say let's select it, right? And let's again right go to the Google page might be, and again skip the thing. So it will change and le options might get changed here. You could see that is the option is coming first. So that is the way as anyone give, giving you something, Google or any kind of search box will give you some suggestion that these are the thing you want to search. So suggestion list will vary also base to base, right? From uh, your time to time or based on your search option or text or your entering. Okay, but you can how you can select the option from the auto that is drop down. So that is the part we'll be covering. So while user navigating to any software website with search box, and that search box shows auto suggest list when user types some word inside it. Simplest example of Ajax auto suggest drop list is Google search suggestion. When user will type some uh, will type something inside, it will show them a list of suggestion from the where option can be selected based on the need. Expert pattern should be same here. Whatever expert pattern will be there from the suggestion, it will be same. That is the one of the beauty. Right? That is the way they have developed. So user need to use for loop to feed the changing value from the expert to expert to the drop down list, and that is the way. Right, in case it is having 10 item, 11 item, I can get the count of the item also, and I can get the list. Right, I can select anything from the auto search drop down. So, let's how we can interact, how we can write the code to deal with the auto search drop down. That is the question will come. So, here already uh, I've written the code for Google. So, instead of Selenium, um, like that part, I want to enter. So, I want to get to know that other than automation library is coming. That is my search channel name. Okay. So as and when I'll be entering and I need to give some thread time, sleep time, so that only that all list, list will be visible because it might take one or two second time to give you the list of options. Otherwise, your script might fail. So always be remember you need to give some sleep time so that right your thing will be displayed properly. Maybe two second, three second like that, two second. So here these are the area where you need to give some real thread time. Okay. Otherwise, as and when you are entering something, right? Might it take to load it, right? Okay, it might take one second, two second time, but in case you are not giving a skip, might be failing, right? Now it's came. Okay, and then we are give, giving it the send key spot. Okay, then I am loading for waiting for two second time. Then what I need to do? I need to identify that how many options is available. So I need to create X path for that. So this is the options available, or maybe go to the first option, try to create X path. So you could see this is the options, right? So this is the class. This is the parent class. So that is the way I can create a expert. So this is the div is the tag, and this is the class. So press Control F, start with tag slash slash div. Give third bracket at the rate class equal to the give the class name like that. You could see. One out of nine, right? Now you just mouse it over. You could see option one by one is getting highlighted. So all the option nine option X path is still same. So you can find manually one out of nine swing. But through automation, I want to find how many option suggestion is there. So what I'll be doing because this will be giving you list of option, right? Not a single option. So driver dot find elements by dot x path so it will be giving me list of options because the fine elements object that is the objective here i will be simply giving the x path here is in the double quote i'll be giving it so now i'll be storing in some list of web element okay variable name i can give anything say uh, options okay then I need to import the list from the Java util package. Now I can print how many options is there, right? We can call size. So here simply I can call SOISO method 
then options dot size this is giving you the integer value coming from the list so let's first identify how many option is getting printed through automation code whether it's nine or not that is your first validation manually we are able to see it is nine whether through automation also you are able to find it nine let's go to the code and let's see whether it's nine you could see it's nine so your code is matching now it's nine so now i want to like select anything from the uh, drop down here maybe i want to select hardware automation library so how can i do it so i need to use a for loop for i need to start with integer i equal to zero i less than options dot size is starting from zero so it will go till size means nine minus one eight it will go then i plus plus that is the first for loop and within the for loop i will be using if condition so if my options variable dot gate of i for every i dot gate of i for every i dot get text get text dot equal ignore case i'm just ignoring the case sensitivity so what i want to match whether it's matching with horizon automation library right there in case it's a matching what i'll be doing i'll be simply clicking on that options dot gate of i every i iterate dot simply click and then in case it is a clicking i want to just break the loop because i don't want to spend the time for iterating it again that is the part i'm implementing here whatever you have learned if and break and for right now let's try to run it and let's see how through automation is behaving so that is the way these are the different important thing i've tried to cover it will click cardinal automation library and that page is open right so that is the way whatever you want to learn right find out the suggestion and you want to click it will be happen so that is the one of the important beauty right how to handle the uh, how to select an option from the auto suggest drop down in selenium okay that was the last topic so i'll just give you one more walk through time and then in case you are having any questions i will take it up okay so sometime frame and iframe might be there uh, in the web page so uh, until you are handling the frame right you cannot interact with any of the element though your element identification is fine but still you need to interact with the frame or iframe so it will be track name will start with frame or iframe so how to inter int get uh, to know you need to get the count first right you need to press f12 button you need to start with frame or iframe then you can get to know how many right with the help of the fine element stack name iframe or frame you can get the size and you can uh, handle it through like diver switch to dot frame or through index or through frame name or id or three well band reference number and capturing skin is very very important in any kind of testing whether it's a pos positive or negative or the defect otherwise right you will not be having right safeguarding yourself right any problem any time any time any problem might come in case you are not capturing the skin for really okay or sometime defect they can develop but they can mark as invalid in case you are not capturing the skin shot so it's three step process first step is you need to create an object or instance for the text skin shot interface then second step you need to call the get skin shot as method you need to right store it in the search file you need to give the uh, distance and file properties or the name or the path and you need to call in the third step you need to call the file handler class and the copy method and you need to place the source to distance and file that is the three step process to capture the skin shot and sometime windows right might be alert or pop up might come and through easiest way because you cannot identify the element that alert or pop up through the element inspector so you there's alert interface available and there are a lot of important method like this means accept like get text or the uh, right or the send keys through which you can handle the alert headless browser testing is nothing in case you are you are doing some testing in the remote browser right all this stuff remote driver remote uh, machine where browser is not set up or any kind of GUI is not available, you can go that do the testing with the help without opening the browser. But it will be same way. But all the thing will be happening, but it will not open the browser only. Sometimes it will first of the execution also. So there are a lot of browsers can be supported like HTML unit, right? Or Chrome also you can make them headless. So I have already showed it how to make the headless browser testing. Cookies will is nothing but the uh, cookies are the file will be stored in your local 
computer or mobile or desktop write in the key value pair as and when user is visiting to the any website and ho which is really required so that you can get all the information that what are the different pages what the thing has been right you have navigated right what is the coverage all this stuff what are the transactions has been covered by your skip you can add the cookies you can remove the cookies you can write get the cookies through name all this stuff right uh, that is the thing available through cookies using serial name web driver then buy all element locator is nothing in case suppose say using driver dot fine element of the fine element right you can only give only one element locator technique but in case that element locator technique might get changed in the future right so your script will fail and you need to make and maintain your skip right but in case sometime you know that right your thing might get changed so you can use multiple element locator technique where you can use buy all and through which you can give the multiple and you can use implicit timeout so in case you are giving three options so it will first check the first in case it is fine it will working fine in case first is not matching it will wait for the maximum implicit timeout then it will go for the second third like that okay. and in case nothing is matching it will throw the error and uh, like uh, sometime right there might be some sort of uh, like drop down primary like google in case you are entering something it will give you the list of options now with the code already showed you through which you can get to know how many right suggestion options is coming and also you can select any kind of options i right, from the based on the suggestion so this are the part is covered today but this is the very very critical item guys okay just try to give the some time on the practice then you will be giving the more clarity and that will be helping you right to learn the uh, selenium web driver related key area in details thank you that's all from today's session